Hello everyone, this is Southern Hellenic. I am back with another video. So in today's video, I'm actually going to do two videos. These are actually redos. Um, I had done these two videos yesterday. However, I decided to really come, I, I come to the, the, the big conclusion that I did not explain um, my position or whatever. Um, good enough and I do not know why my screen went dark okay why are you doing that again I don't know so uh, my wild hair I did finally get around to watching it um, it's just leg pain um, going to work is actually torture on me it's like I'm on my leg on an injured leg for hours and it's like, it's just torture. You don't want my brother's opinion about work. Because uh, I don't think anybody on YouTube would... I don't think anybody on YouTube would actually criticize him on his position. Anyways. So, um, I had talked about um, the household... The ancestors. Ancestors. I have made so many videos on this channel in the over year that it's been up that I I just forget half of what I talked about. Even the titles I put up kind of make me forget what the heck I talked about in those videos. Um, which means I think I need to I think I need to ensure that my title actually reflects what the heck I'm talking about in my videos. So we're going to talk about the Lalarum. In this video and I have not done a Roman video in several months I was going to do one or two a month but then I started to do more Hellenic videos and all that type of stuff and I kind of veered away from it even though Roman religion is just as important as Hellenic religion um, to the people and the, to the people that practice it and where they're practicing it at so the Lalarum. Now the Lalarum is, is, is in layman terms, the household shrine, the household altar to the Lars and to the Mains. And these are the spirits that protect the home from stuff. And if any, any uh, at, if at any time during this video I wince, it's just that pain just shot through my leg so I just want to warn you guys ahead of time that there might be some wincing in this video so let's talk about the Lalarum and then my next video I'm going to be talking about something funny that happened when I posted a photo of mine uh but right uh maybe like maybe like a couple of months before mom's passing it's still up. It's still up. If it wants to know, it's still up. It's still up in the realms of YouTube. Uh, not YouTube, but uh, Facebook. So, let's get to the Lalarum. So, the Lalarum is the, as I said, is the household altar. Um, the Lars, the Mains, and of course to whatever um, god or goddess that you are intending to honor. We're not talking about working with, we're talking about honoring. We're talking about worship. So, there's a there's a difference between working with a deity, like working with an athame or working with a wand, and honoring and actual worshiping of the gods. So, so, when I was interested in Roman religion, this is way, 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 way back. This is back when I was in my 20s. Would it makes me shudder. <laughs> Why does everything... It's really weird. When you're, in your, when you're in your 40s and you think about... think Go back 20 years ago about all the stuff that you did when you were in your 20s, you kind of shudder like, have I gotten that old? You've gotten that old. <laughs> um, so um, I was I was trying to understand Roman religion and how to practice it in a home that 
if you have someone who's not well versed in the different pagan religions, they might think it's Wicca. Hint, mom, hint. <laughs> So, uh, I had never heard of a Lalaram. I know, shocking. Uh, and it actually took me uh, quite some time to even understand or even know this word existed. So, if you go into modern day Rome now, or, and, or you go into, go into what used to be uh, the old city, uh, that's where the vast majority of your, temp your temple ruins are at and stuff like that. There is, as far as I know of, I've never been to Italy. I really want to go to Italy because my, uh, because my um, father's family is from Italy. My father was full-blooded Italian, and I can lay claim that I truly am a true half-Italian. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so... The, so the historical past of Italy really is something that I really like to read about because despite all their faults and despite all the stuff that they did, the ancient Romans were a pretty fascinating group of people. If you minus the slavery and the, and the gladiatorial games and stuff like that. Um, oh, no, never take that. Never mind. The... Gladiatorial games were interesting, but talking about like the slavery and the, you know, and treating women like their property and all that type of stuff. And the fact is women put up with it. Um, so, only in the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum do we actually see the Lalarum. And the reason for this is that these cities were destroyed prior to to the outlawing of paganism or polytheism in ancient Rome. So a lot of the things that, so when we read that the church had all of the temples closed, they actually didn't. The uh, temples that, the ruins of the temples in Pompeii and Herculaneum, they are the only temples that were never shut down for obvious reasons, a.k.a. Volcano. So we see a lot of the things that we don't see in the ruins in the old city. We don't, we, in the old city, we don't see the Lalarums. We don't see, um, we don't see the, the snippet of ancient polytheistic life. We just see old ruins that either were destroyed by the church or was destroyed by natural occurrences. So, a lot of the cult statues, they were still there, even though they were in pieces or they were bare or they ended up going somewhere else because of the force of the eruption. They're still there. The cult statues are still there. Um, you have the Temple of Isis still there and remarkably in really good condition so so if you're new to roman paganism and you want to know what a lalarum is it is a household altar now i will make a statement that may or may not be true but that's my statement it's and since it's my channel, I can make that statement. Um, the Catholic altar that you see in Italy, the Catholic altars you see in people's homes, these are, this is a byproduct of the Lalarum. It may not have the Lars and the Mains on there, but they do things like burn incense, they burn candles, they have pictures of their dead relatives, they may have pictures of the Virgin Mary, of Jesus, of the saints, but this is essentially the same thing. It's a lalarum, point blank. And with um, 
Lumera, I think that's I think that's how you pronounce it, coming up Sunday, which I will be doing a video on that. I probably will do the video um, later on today, but then I will upload it on Sunday because I have to work. I have to close on Sunday, and I won't be able to do it. Now, when I get home, I am going to... Um, I am going to do um, a little something for my ancestors. Um, sorry about that. So, um, I am not going to try to say the names of these containers because I cannot. But um, this time around, my phone is on. <laughs> Ugh. Lord. <sighs> I grab my spelled uh <sighs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to actually, this is from um, theroma.org, um, and it says here, and I'll, I'll read, read it what it says here. The Lalarum was a shrine to the guardian spirits of the Roman household. Family members performed daily rituals at the shrine to guarantee the protection of these domestic spirits, the most significant of which were the Lars. Now, uh, Ark, um, I have I have uh, gone with them before. They do now have little mini Lars uh, for sale. If anybody's interested in it, um, I will. Uh, bef when I upload this video, I will go ahead and prior to it, I will get onto their Etsy shop. And give you guys a link if you're interested in their products. They they do sell some good products. These spirits were depicted as two young men in dancing postures holding drinking horns. They were most frequently represented by small bronze statuettes as shown at right or as painted images as shown below. The other significant guardian spirit was the genus who was a fertility spirit responsible for ensuring the family's line would continue. Um, each genus stood for the paterfamilias, whose birthday was the feast day of the genus. Uh, in the Lalaurin painting below, the genus is depicted wearing the toga, uh, I can't pronounce it, boarding in purple, the garment of high-ranking Roman mass rates. All right. So that's what it was, <clears throat> and uh, there, there was, there was a show on HBO years ago called Rome, and they had these little um, videos depicting on d talking about different aspects of Roman life, and one of them, of course, <clears throat> was religion. And the historian, historian. Uh, they actually had a historian that came on there to make sure that it was historically accurate, which was mind-blowing, <laughs> mind-blowing for me. I actually have not watched um, a single episode of Rome. Uh, the actor who played, I don't know his name, uh, he played Poseidon in the Percy Jackson, uh, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. He played, he play so if you guys know who I'm talking about... <laughs> You'll know he 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 played on the show Rome. Um, I think it was that um, what was it? He sacrificed one pig for every man he killed, and then of course he got a discount after a certain number of pigs. And I'm thinking those poor priests <laughs> had their arms were like, I don't want to do this no more. Um, but the historian was saying that, um, 
was talking about a lot about Roman religion, which was interesting. And what it wasn't supposed to be for. It wasn't supposed to give you any kind of comfort. It wasn't for your soul. It was for the state. So, I think the most interesting part about was the naked woman that was set on the stool, which I thought was um, interesting. But, um, yeah, those little snippets, like they talk about slavery and, uh, and the role of women, it was interesting. So, so when we, so when you decide that you want to set up a Roman shrine, what I did when I didn't have, you know, tons of money, I mean, take that back, I never have had tons. The only, only time I actually had tons of money, not tons and tons of money, but a good amount of money, was when my grandmother passed away. That was my father's mother. She died of uh, complications from Alzheimer's, which was sad. Um, and so anyways, um, so I would print out an image from uh, a Lalaurum in Pompeii, and I would frame it, and then I would go and I would have... Um, was it I had a couple statues um, I you know I knew from my from my research in Roman society that there was there was that Rome liked to import foreign deities but I definitely tried to have like the Greek statues because I couldn't afford oh so I was I I couldn't afford I just couldn't find them Roman statues of these deities so I was stuck with the Greek ones which was fine and then I had a couple I think I had like a Celtic one all that type of stuff but um yeah so I had it and then I had an incense burner and I had a candle and I had a bowl and that was my little arm that was all I had and then I had to learn how to do ritual properly, which was very, very, very uh, constraining. Um, I did not have access to the stuff that's now available now, which is shows how much time can pass in 20 years. You, you have no hardly no information that you have information. In fact, down here in my uh, table, I actually have a printout of a Roman format, which I will be... Oh, pardon me, um, which I will be using, uh, so I'll be using that, uh, cause I'm planning on to do a video where I will be, um, I will be showing you guys a Roman morning ritual. I was going to do that when I had two days off side by side, but I don't know when that's going to happen, so I've decided that next week the third which is also the day i get paid i will be doing a um a morning try to try to do in the morning i will try to do in the morning i don't know if i'll succeed but i will try to do in the morning a roman ritual i do have wine i do have milk so we're good <laughs> um but yeah so this is for educational purposes and this is so that people can see how one group does a Roman ritual and everything. So, um, yeah, so you would have the picture of the Lars and the genus, which in the picture that I chose from Pompeii, it actually had the Lars and the genus in that one photo. Or that one mosaic or fresco, and then um, you would have you're supposed to have a container for wine, a container for milk. You're supposed to have an incense burner. You're supposed to have a um, a con uh, something for a, a bowl for to. A bowl for wine, a bowl for milk, 
a container for food, and then it's like, um, it's called Molos, Molos, I'm probably, I'm probably butchering it, Molos, Salsa, I, I guess I'm probably butchering it. I don't quite know what it is. I gotta look it up. Um, and I'm probably, I'm probably missing something. But if you don't have the money for that type of thing, my advice is, okay, the, the gods understand that you don't have everything. Um, so if you can just, if you just have a, uh, an incense burner and a bowl for water or a bowl for milk or a bowl for wine or whatever, just work with what you have. Um, now one of the things that I did, I did do when I was first learning how to practice Roman religion was I did keep my, um, my head covered. And I actually have a red piece of cloth from, I bought months and months ago. And I'm actually going to use that. So if you see a girl with <laughs> red, that's me. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty. Now, I am going to do a series. I No, today I probably won't. Um, though I may. I may. Um, one of the things you have to understand is the Roman gods are different from the Greek gods, even though... They were essentially borrowed from the Greeks. For example, is Ares is considered a god of war, and he's not really a liked Olympian. In Roman religion, he is called Mars, and he is considered uh, he's he's very much connected with the land, with the fields, and so he is a he's he's embraced more. Uh, more enthusiastically um, than his uh, Greek counterpart. Um, but yeah. Um, but but Ares, as well as his Roman counterpart Mars, is definitely a god of the military. And so you have a lot of people in the military that will honor Mars. Um, not to the back. Not a lot of people in the military, but but people that are practicing Roman religion or Greek religion, they will embrace um, Ares slash Mars. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but the people above me, they, they like to slam doors. I do not know what the deal with that is. Um, yeah, so, you know, work with what you have. But, uh, but there are, but there are places, there are groups on Facebook that will have, um, that will give you advice on how to do a ritual. Um, I don't, I think it might have been, um, either Cultus Decorum or Roman Revivalist Group was the one that had the outline of the Roman, Roman ritual. But yeah, so... Yeah, so um, if Roman religion is for you and you want to set up a alarm, I hope that my um, my video helps. I do want to note that starting today, they're having the festival of ISIS. And no, not the terrorist group. Why do I keep on saying that? Oh, I forgot because I'm afraid that YouTube might ping it. <laughs> because I used the word ISIS. <coughs> oh, man. But, yeah. So, the Festival of ISIS is going on. And then, of course, later on, there's going to have the... Uh, have uh, a ritual dedicated to Osiris. That one... Um, that one, if... Your follower of Isis and Osiris definitely take part in. Um, 
I think they're going to have a video of it, so I'm just going to watch the video. Because <laughs> I just love when they speak Italian. I just love that. I can't understand anything they're saying, but I love when they speak Italian. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll be something to occupy my time in a constructive way <laughs> instead of, oh, man. Yeah, guys, don't ever, ever land on your legs. Please don't. It, it, it fucking hurts. Bad. My brother's going to give me a leg brace because he is sick and tired of seeing me in pain. And I've got a, uh, I've got a manager that's demand that I get one. Um, so, hopefully, hopefully the leg brace will help. I am going to send prayers to Asclepios and to, um, Asclepios and to Apollo slash Apollo for healing because I need it bad. But yeah, so I'm going to end it here and my next video is going to be funny. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be funny. It was funny for me because I was kind of like, what the freak? So I'll see you guys around. Bye.